I'm Adam. And I'm Lawrence. And we're, we're doing a game review. Yeah, we're bringing it back. Kind of. We're not giving an actual score, but we played Assassin's Creed Unity, and we're going to talk about the game. Right, Lawrence? We are. Okay. Take them. They must not fall into the Assassin's hands. Jumping on people, stabbing them. So, Adam, how long have you played the game? I'm going to say five to six hours. The copy arrived at our office on Friday. I spent a weekend with it between that and Master Chief stuff. So my time was kind of torn a little bit, but I enjoyed what I played it. Did you? Kind of. Okay. Um, I, I will. I, I mean, what would you like to talk about first? Well, just generally, what a it's kind of a thick game. There's a lot to talk about. So, what like what pops out in your head first? Well, first of all, I love the Assassin's Creed franchise, so I don't think this is one of those games that's going to convert you. It's like if you've hated this franchise from the beginning, you're not going to like it now. If you're a fan of it, I think you're going to be very interested, and I like. Historical settings, I think picking France during the French Revolution is very interesting, and no other game is ever going to touch that, and so already I'm sold, um, so you don't have to do a lot. The game just has to basically play at this point, and I'm a fan. Okay. I cut you! Cut you to the 13th generation of your blood! You shot me! So when it comes to the Assassin's Creed series, it's... It's migrated a bit, started off as a very kind of core stealth mm -hmm. assassin game, got very broad, and by the fourth one, we're just sailing around in boats, there's not a whole lot of sneaking. So yeah. w when the series, just to kind of gauge your taste, yeah. do you like it where it started, where it ended up, where do you fall on, on your liking of I, the series? I remember the first game and thinking, um, I'm really bored by the repetition, but they really got this parkour system down. This is really interesting, this is cool. And it felt like it did, the, the, as the series progressed, you're right, it kind of got away from stealth mechanics. Whereas this game, hold on, I'm going to blow your mind. Uh -huh. If you pull or just uh -huh. press the left trigger, uh -huh. you actually crouch. Uh -huh. And there's a cover button. You don't aim down sights of your little wrist blade? Uh, you can do, well, it's not really aim down sights, but I mean, that's kind of there. <laughs> uh, but the fact is, there is, I feel like, more of an emphasis on stealth. Uh, I feel like you die a lot quicker, especially early in the game. You only take a few shots. You can still heal instantly by, you know, using breaking out your medicine and just hitting up on the d-pad but overall this seems like the emphasis is on being a stealthy assassin which for the game called assassin's creed thank god so does it go all the way back because the first assassin's creed was patterned around maybe 10 big assassination attempts and gathering intel around those uh, does this game revolve around assassinating very a few very high-profile targets? Of course, yeah. That's always kind of been the story uh, for Assassin's Creed. You know, you have your main targets that you have to go after. But um, it actually reminds me a lot of Assassin's Creed 2. And I say that in the sense that it flows really well, hmm. where it, it does that thing that I think, like, GTA 5 did really well, where I can't really go more than 20 feet without seeing something pretty or, like, something blip on my radar that there's something else I want to do. There'll be like a crowd event that I want to do, or like, oh, there's this shady looking assassin off to the side. He has a mission to offer me, or oh, there's another mission over here, or here's this other thing. Like, it feels like there's a lot to do, and France is huge. Like, I feel like I've only explored a very small percentage of this world, and it's going to take me a very long time to get through all of it. Like, it just it feels massive. Well, you mentioned crowd events. What are those? Uh, crowd event. So it's like I think it's called like it's basically a public event. So I forget exactly what it's called, but like something will be happening on the street. So like some guys will be mugging someone, and it just says go kill them. So like <laughs> uh, I'm a good guy. I'm gonna murder people. <laughs> uh, so that that's one of the things. Or like stop a thief. Those have always existed, but they seem to pop up more often. Mm. And it just makes the city definitely more than other games feel more alive. Like more things are kind of happening. And the fact that you can go inside of a lot of buildings now way more than you could in Assassin's Creed 3 like you can actually walk through them there's multiple levels it's it just adds kind of a new layer like it makes the the, the whatever the world feel a lot more fleshed out well you spoke you spoke about walking around uh, Paris and seeing cool stuff I mean just graphically how does it work there was a bit of a hubbub whenever Whenever Ubisoft was like, listen, it's 30 frames per second, <laughs> but it's gorgeous, so just shut up. Uh, that, did that turn out being the case? Man, you know what? I, I wish they could get at least 30 frames because oh. the game slows down a lot. We're playing on Xbox One. That, that was the review copy that was given to us. There are some really bad, jarring frames. Like, it, it just, it's screen tearing constantly, and it, sometimes it's just, it just skips complete sections. Like, it, the frame rate gets really, really bad. And I think that's just... The, the, that's just something that happened when they're trying to cram too much into this game. Like the, the crowd scenes, there are thousands of people and the game just takes a hit. Like it goes really slow. It basically goes into slow motion mm. and not good slow motion, bad slow motion. <laughs> not Matrix slow motion? No. And not I, Zack Snyder slow motion? Um, and I can't speak on behalf of the, the PS4 version or the PC version, but 
I, I'm honestly, I'm not really on the technical side, not feeling it on Xbox One. That's interesting. Um, I've had the game glitch out on me a few times, which is really unfortunate. Like, there's one part where I just went through the, um, <laughs> <laughs> went through the floor. Uh, so they had that. Uh, on that note, they have a really cool mechanic now. So throughout the game, you're, you're familiar with the Assassin's Creed franchise. You hold down the right trigger, and then you press A, and you climb things quickly. Now they have it over here. If you're high up and you hold the right trigger and you press B, you climb down quickly. And that's super helpful. But one point, I climbed down, I guess, too quickly, and I just fell through the floor. So, uh, oops. But you still still fun. Too good at parkouring. <laughs> Stop! Get down! Will you let me back in if I do? What? Certainly not! Well then, if it's all the same to you, I think I'll stay up here. So that's interesting because uh, I'm playing it on Xbox One as well, mm -hmm. and I think I've just been lucky because I'm actually pretty impressed technically with the game. Yeah, I've had I've had some similar issues. I had one time where uh, it was the scene where the shadowy assassin organization inducts Arno, the main character, mm -hmm. into being an assassin for real, except none of the textures loaded except for the characters. So they're all just kind of floating in space talking against this infinite black void. Yeah. And it, it kind of neutered any drama that might have been in the scene, but I also think the, the narrative of Assassin's Creed is Wasn't just silly the man anyway. you thought he was. Neither of our fathers were. I know exactly who my father was, Arno. And I know who yours was. Oh, of course. Oh, I, I've actually, I've always had problems since cool. Assassin's Creed 2. I didn't play enough Assassin's Creed 1 to see anything, but like there was one time where like I jumped on a woman, she was on a boat, and she just flew up into the air. <laughs> like, so it, it, they're almost comical at this point. Like they never really... It, nothing has so far has broken like a mission where like I can't complete a mission if anything that has actually been one of the best parts of the game is when you before you start a main mission they actually kind of give you three or four routes that you can go and they even tell you in the bottom right uh, there are ten entrances to like Notre Dame so figure it out and there's really like you can try it many different ways and I actually really enjoy that so the, the core of the game works it's just on the technical side there's just some problems yeah, there's uh, along the path of there being multiple entrances and stuff, I like that there's a sewer system you can go into now. Right. In previous Assassin's Creed, it was always the fast travel system. Basically, you you know unlock a sewer grate. But now there's an actually mapped out sewer system to France. So if you need to get inside a building, you can either climb and lockpick in a window. You can go into the sewers and come up inside the building. They give you options, which is nice. I mean, that was always kind of the... That was supposed to be what the system or what the game was all about. And it just seemed to kind of move away from that. Yeah, it, it's actually one of those things that really, I guess, kind of confuses me with the Assassin's Creed franchise. Is that it is now a yearly franchise, even that, and they're even putting out two a year now. And the games seem to keep getting bigger and bigger, which is scary. And like, like I said, France is huge. Even without any sailing missions, there's the catacombs, there are the insides of houses, there is France itself, like, or Paris. Like, it's just, it's just huge. There's so much to do. Oh, <laughs> or yeah, at least, at least things to run on, and it's fun to run. <laughs> And, oh my god, all the buildings are gorgeous. Like, you were mentioning Notre Dame. Just climbing and walking around the outside of that building mm -hmm. is, you know, I've never been. But this is a nice way to dabble my toes in exploring Europe. It's, very, like I said, if you're into any sort of historical setting, like, right now, you know, there's we're watching gameplay of us running through Versailles. And I was very fortunate enough that, like, recently I went on vacation to Paris, and my wife and I went to Versailles. And it's that weird moment of like, oh my god, they did a great job of this. Like, I've actually walked through some of these parts in modern day and seen them replicated in a video game. It's just like really freaking cool because, you know, Call of Duty's not going to do this. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's going to blow it up. Well, I mean, no, uh, no other game is going to have anything set in the revolutionary, you know, American Revolution or, you know, the French Revolution. Like, no other game will do this. And so, if anything, I always appreciate that from the Assassin's Creed franchise. <laughs> Uh, in your time with the game so far, sadly, I don't, we haven't had time to do co-op, which is kind of the banner feature right. of Unity. An another, another reason why we're, you know, obviously not going to give any real review score, because we haven't been able to play the game to completion. Sure, but uh, from what you've played so far, what, what has surprised you, and what do you really like about Unity? Oh, I really I like how quickly they introduce Arno, and they don't really waste too much time. It's just, here's the character, let's go into it. There's some interesting aspects about him, and I like, I like him as a character. He's not exactly Ezio. I, I thought... After Connor, I was like, I'm just so bored of these characters. Like, there's nothing really anything special about them. And then even uh, Kenway, I was like, yeah, he's okay. And like, I I like Arno. They made a, a very likable character. He's not a uh, he's not really a um, a stereotype. Yeah. Which is what I appreciate. Uh, so so far, and I I like how he moves as a character. I like the fact that he's very acrobatic. Like I think 
that about him is really freaking cool. Um, and just just how much fun it is to run around. I thought I, I'm just actually really surprised that every time I boot the Xbox back up, I'm really excited to just run around Paris again. Like that, just the core gameplay makes me excited to play. That's a really good point. Uh, I, I like starting with about Brotherhood and on. Uh, Assassin's Creed's has kind of started to feel like a list of tasks. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't really fun to do the tasks because the act of doing them wasn't that fun, like traversing the city, and it just didn't have that feeling. But for me, Unity feels similar to one where I noticed Arno moves a lot slower than Connor or uh, Edward. And also, it just that helps because it makes it feel more like it's a human being traveling instead of a video mm -hmm. game character just blitzing all over the place. There's some inconsistency. So, like, he does, I feel like, move a bit slower and more deliberate. And I think that's uh, through the, the, the game, you actually get other pieces of gear that you can unlock. Like, you can unlock different hoods, different shirts, pants, boots. Like, it, it's, it's. With all, Creed points! You get down, or you get Creed points. Oh, God. And you can get all these different bits. And then, so, like, as the character Arno will change based on those. Like, yeah, there's actually stat base, which is really interesting. Uh, but other times, while he, he moves a little slow, sometimes he'll just fly up into yeah. places. Or just if, do jumps that are ridiculously long. Yeah, I think like gravity has no hold on him at some point. But um, I, I, like I said, overall, I like the way he moves. It feels almost more acrobatic, more ninja-like. Like he has just a lot of like, turns and twists and like mm. does a lot of cool moves that makes you feel like, oh, that's neat. It's like the first time playing Majora's Mask and Link did a cool little flip when he jumped and I'm like, ooh, that's neat. Yeah, the, the quick descend, I see a lot of that. A lot of like spins and just like cool, yeah, like you are saying, just cool little ninja moves. Um, yeah, that's, uh, it definitely does a good job of communicating that Arno is not just a palette swapped mm -hmm. Edward or <laughs> Connor. What are you disappointed with in the game? Obviously, the technical aspect seems to be a little lacking. I, I mean, really, so far, it's just the technical aspect. I'm, I'm into the story so far. Uh, I, we haven't tried the co-op yet, so I can't tell you whether that works or not. Um, but so far, I'm liking everything in there. Like, I've, I've played every single Assassin's Creed since 2, pretty much every year since they've come out. And the series has really yet to bore me, because it, it, it's still surprising me. They keep trying to push it. And unfortunately, it suffers on the technical side from how much they're trying to push it. Mm -hmm. uh, which is, I mean, I'm sure there's uh, some engineer, some game designer who's probably listening to this while crying it and being like, but, wait, look, 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 but look how many people are on screen. I'm like, yeah, but maybe if you took like 50 out, uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe it would have ran at a solid 30 frames per second. So on a technical side, I, you know, I really hope that through a patch or something, they fix it or the PC version, the PS4 version handles a bit better. But um, really, that that's it. The game is fun to play. It's Assassin's Creed. You, at this point, if you don't know what you're getting, <laughs> shame on you. Well, that's kind of weird to say, considering the Assassin's Creed's games have been also different. To, to a very, very minor yeah. differences. At the, at the end of the day, it's always about you know, a handsome rogue who... <laughs> Uh, it's a different game. It's almost it's almost like a hero's journey in a weird way. He starts out as just kind of like a nobody. He's like, did you know you have eagle vision? He's like, what? I have eagle vision? Cool. And then they give him a blade and he stabs a bunch of dudes. Or he's, you know, try you know, they they pin a murder on him that he didn't commit. And then he goes murders a bunch of people. The story's always been... <laughs> to prove what not a murderer he is. Right. And then they're like, and then they're like how can we weave this into history somehow? Yeah. When, what, what historical figure can we shoehorn in and just make you go, oh, cool. I remember reading about that guy. So... The, the series hasn't really changed too much, but the, you know, it keeps selling. So if it's not broken, don't fix it. But on this side, please fix it technically. That's all I really ask. Man, that skin looks good, though. <laughs> I mean, so this From is... From time to time, yes, the skin does look good. <laughs> a bit of a nerdy thing, like, lighting on skin is one of the hardest things to do. And they still don't have it good. And for a real-time right. engine, Unity is actually really impressive when it comes to lighting and character models. Uh, going back, though, to other surprises, though, you and I were talking about uh, the lighting in the game is actually... Look at that skin, man. Really good. The Whatever lighting engine they're using for indoors and outdoors, like, it's a it's a very unique lighting system. Mm -hmm. And it, it it's very subtle, but, like, certain indoor scenes, like, the amount of time it takes for your eyes to adjust... Yeah, it, the HDR. It, it definitely harkens back to, like, old cinema and certain things that they're doing that I actually really appreciate. And then just going through the character unlock system of all the different pieces you can unlock and how many different ways, like the individual pieces that it's, it's insane. Instead of just the one outfit that you unlock for the characters, like, you know, big black cloak or whatever, mm -hmm. just all these little minute pieces can be changed and actually 
makes it feel a lot more unique in that sense that like you can dress a bit more like a normal person so you don't feel like you're wearing a big flowy dress and like I'm an assassin ignore me which never has ever made sense to me yeah got um, a giant hood with a little eagle talon on it yeah and then they've Beak. even incorporated some parts from multiplayer into the single player that I really like where you can do a thing where you can disguise yourself as a just an NPC oh um, you unlock that kind of later in the game and like you can just select someone and you will just magically look like that person doesn't make any sense if they're trying to be realistic but it's fun. Animus. It, it's it's an animus, so who cares? And then there's even some weird kind of time travel things in there that I don't want to spoil. I don't know if it's much of a spoiler, but they, they're doing some really weird things, and I like that. That was always one of the, the liberties of the Assassin's Creed franchise, since it's all ostensibly in a weird VR simulation. They can kind of get away with anything they want. Well, of course, it's one of the few games that has tried to explain why it's a video game. Yeah. And it's kind of fun, and they've just they've shed away all the... The Desmond stuff, and especially in this one, it goes right off from pretty much where they were with Assassin's Creed 4, where instead of a game tester, now you're just full on, just a user using the Animus, and seeing the story. You know, you know you're using Absurgo's system, but you're you get hacked, and then you have to. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Assassin hacked. You, you get Assassin hacked, and then you gotta see you know the story from the Assassin's point of view, which. The more you play the games, you realize just everybody's wrong. Basically, yeah. So. That's one of the one of the things about the story, the ongoing Assassin's Creed story that I like about Unity so far, is it does a good job of painting you as somebody who's not really invested in this shit at all. Mm -hmm. And it's just like it's just these two stupid organizations slap fighting each other and trying to get everyone on their side. And it's just, I don't care. <laughs> I just really don't care. Abstergo is using you, hijacking your neurons to help them sift through genetic memory data. You played it for a few, or six, six to eight hours. Six to eight hours, yeah. Do you think it's worth 60 bucks at this point? Oh, yeah, I mean, definitely. If you're an Assassin's Creed fan, this is, it's a fun game. It's good. Um, I'm going to say wait and see hmm. uh, if there's a, a patch, technically, to fix it. Uh, for me, though, like, I, I'll put up with it because it's fun and I want to get through the story and I like jumping and stabbing dudes. So, yes, I will, I will plop down my 60 bucks in a heartbeat to play it. Um, with that said, though, you should probably wait and see the other reviews out there from a technical aspect to see if the PS4 version is better, the PC version is better if you have a PC, or if they kind of get iron out the kinks on. I heard there's a, a like a 900 gig or sorry 900 meg patch coming out like on day one. Oh wow! So I'm hoping that fixes a few of the issues. Um, but besides that, yes, it's Assassin's Creed. If you like it, and you like France, you're gonna enjoy the game. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Adam. We got a co-op stab soon. We're gonna co-op stab. So many people. Oh man. Do you think four people can all stab one guy just like shoving all their knives into the one man's skull? Like evaporating it? Ugh, poor guy. With that I say yes. Tonight he is reborn. A novice of the Assassin Brotherhood. So anyway, you guys, there you go. You've been asking for it. There's our review, sort of. Uh, if you want to see more of this stuff, let us know, please, in the comments. Like, all that fun stuff. Just tell us. Uh, we want to do more of these things. They do take time out of our normal schedule, getting all the stuff out for you guys. But we enjoy doing them. So if you enjoy watching them, please let us know. James is watching a funny video over there. Pay attention. That looks funny. But if you can play more than 10 hours and get the, get the players over that hump of where they're like terrible, 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 oh, they're not so terrible, and now they're actually pretty okay. Right, right. Then they'll play exponentially more hours. I always thought that was very strange. Like, buy, buy games, you know, get Spartan Assault through the Windows Store. Like, how about no? How about we use Steam, please? We've said this a million times. It's, it's all, Jesus Christ. It's, uh, it's convergence. Everything's going to become one thing. Right now. Will you converge with me? What's going on in this room? I don't know. Something's retarded, like crazy, like 74,000 minutes of video go up every minute on, uh, I forget exactly what it was, but it's something, some crazy number where like, if you even tried to keep up, you'd be behind within a day.